Okay. All right, my brother. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto God of, the, of the gods. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. For his mercy endureth forever. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders. To him alone doeth great wonders. For his mercy endureth forever. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. To him who by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy endureth forever. For his mercy endureth forever. I read Psalms 136, verse 1 and 2, and 4 and 5. May the Lord have blessed to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, brothers and sisters, happy Sabbath day. And uh, go ahead and have a seat. Everybody should have a Bible. And everybody should have a, a lesson for today. And as you know, we're going to start off by reading the law. So if you can open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Okay, go ahead and get your seats. Give everybody a chance to open up your Bibles. Everybody should have a Bible and a lesson. And we're going to Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to be reading verses 1 through 17. Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to be reading verses 1 through 17. Can I have a volunteer for reading Exodus chapter 20? Any volunteers for reading Exodus chapter 20? Okay, Josiah, I'm going to have you read it. Okay. okay, folks, let's settle down. Exodus chapter 20, we're going to read verses 1 through 17. Okay, my brother. And God speak all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto, any, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or anything of any likeness that is heaven above, that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow to thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show him mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, and keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor, and do all thy work. For the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in, all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. Let's go now to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. If you have a church Bible, this is on page 819. If you have a church Bible... This is on page 819. So again, if you have a church Bible, this is on page 819. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. We'll give everybody a chance to get there. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Okay. All right, my brother. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall, for that, for God shall bring every work into judgment with, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. 
Last one, let's go to Revelation chapter 22. The last book in the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 14 to 15. Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Y'all ready, gentlemen? Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Last book in the Bible. If you have a church Bible, this is on page 1474. Page 1474. Revelation 22, I'm going to read 14 and 15. Okay, my brother, go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates, through the gates into the city. For without dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Amen. So we read the commandments. So the commandments is what gets you into the, the book of life. The commandments are what you, gets you into the kingdom of God. You don't keep God's commandments. You end up in the lake of fire. That's outside the city. It's going to be in God's kingdom. Okay, but you'll end up in the lake of fire. You don't keep God's commandments. So salvation is made up of us keeping God's commandments. We read those in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. God cared so much about them, he came and spoke them to the nation of Israel himself and wrote them in stone twice with his own finger. This is very serious to God, these Ten Commandments, and this is what salvation is made of. This is what God is commanding us to keep each and every day of our lives. All right? Well, welcome, happy Sabbath day, children. Uh, my name is Brother Darren, for those who don't know me. Uh, today's lesson is Lessons from the Kings, Part 2. Last week was the first lesson on Lessons from the Kings. We did Part 1. Today's going to be uh, Part 2. But very similar, we're going to be studying a couple of righteous kings, right? The nation of Israel split after Solomon. You had the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah. The nation of Judah had several righteous kings, and we're going to study them. However, we found, we're going to find out today, they made some mistakes. These righteous kings, right? These are guys, when I say righteous, they kept God's commandments. They sought after God, but they still made some mistakes. And we're going to see what can we learn from them, right? We're seeking after God here. We're keeping the Lord's Sabbath. We keep God's commandments. But can we learn from the mistakes of others? Again, we talked about last week. It's a lot easier to learn from the mistakes of others than to learn from your own mistakes, right? If you do something wrong and, someone, and that other person, if you do something wrong and get slapped in the face, that hurts a lot more than if you see somebody else do something wrong and they get slapped in the face, right? I'd rather take notes and say, I don't want to get slapped in the face, so I'm not going to do what that brother did. So I'd rather take note, see what they did, and what can I learn from that? So we started this last week. What are some of the things people learned from last week? The first part of the lesson from the Kings. Those folks who were here last week, what's something that you learned from last week or remember from last week? What are some of the mistakes you said we didn't want to make? Okay, sir. When you hang out with wicked people, wicked things happen to you. Yes, when you hang out with wicked people, wicked things happen to you. You know, you're hanging out with, with uh, your friend, your close, close friend, a drug dealer, a gangbanger. Guess what? You're not going to be surprised if you catch a bullet if you're hanging out with the wicked. Because what? Wicked people get wicked things happen to them. And if you're hanging around them, wicked things can happen to you. So we know we don't want that to happen. Go ahead, Joshua. What you got? Uh, you should be careful about the company you keep. Absolutely. Keep, be careful of the company you keep, right? Because guess what? We already talked about that, right? A bad apple, can, one bad apple can spoil a whole bunch. You're hanging around with people who steal, people who lie. You don't want that stuff rubbing off on you. All of a sudden, you think it's okay to lie. You think it's okay to steal. That's a problem. Because you know, guess what? God's going to cut those people off. Anybody else from here who was last week? Something you remember from last week? Some things what not to do. You can learn from the mistakes of others. Anything else? Those, those are some good ones. So we're going to get into this part two of Lesson from the King. What can we learn from the mistakes of others so we don't make those same mistakes? So we're going to start this one off in 1 Kings chapter 15. 1 Kings chapter 15. This is Lesson from the Kings part two. 1 Kings chapter 15. 1 Kings chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 5. Okay, guys, we need to be in order. We know we're in class right now. Sit up, pay attention, 
get ready to learn. Right? You want to play, go home, tell your mama I'm not serious, and, and your daddy, they can deal with you. But you're here in class, we're here to deal with the business of the Lord. This is the Lord's Sabbath day. Act accordingly. 1 Kings chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 5. Again, we're talking about some righteous kings. Righteous kings. 1 Kings chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 5. 1 Kings chapter 15, and we want to read verse 5. Do I have a volunteer for that one? 1 Kings 15 and 5. All right, that's all right. It's on you, brother. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the, all the days of his life, save only in the matter of, of Uriah the Hittite. We're talking about King David. King David was a righteous king. He was after God's own heart. He made all the decisions like God would do. He thought like God would do, right? He wanted to build a temple for the Lord. God said, it was good that was in your heart, but, you, but I don't want you to do it because you've been killed too many people. But he was a righteous king. He kept the law of the Lord and all the things that throughout his life, except he made one mistake. What was that? He said he made a mistake of who? when he dealt with Uriah the Hittite. So we had a righteous king who made one mistake. Let's see what we can learn from that, one mistake. Call my King David. Let's go over to 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11. <clears throat> Second Samuel chapter 11. We're gonna get a reader from this. 2 Samuel chapter 11. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. 2 Samuel 11, and we're going to read verse 1 through 3. 2 Samuel 11. You got it, brother. 2 Samuel 11, verses 1 through 3. 2 Samuel chapter 11. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. It's on page 412 in the Bible. 412, you got church Bible. So again, David was a righteous king, but he made one mistake. We want to see what happened with David. 2 Samuel 11, and we're going to read verse 1 through 3. Let's see what we can learn from this. Ladies, I'm coming your way next. Ladies, over there, I'm coming your way next. 2 Samuel chapter 11. We're going to read verse 1 through 3. Okay, brother, go ahead. And it came to pass after a year of exp explained. Expired. Expired mm -hmm. at the time when kings go forth of to battle. That David sent Job and servants with him in all Israel. Yep. And they destroyed the children of Ammon. Ammon. And besieged. Besieged. How you say that? Reba. Hey. Besieged Reba. Reba by Dave. Job. Job. He tarried. Tarried. Skilled of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Thank you. That's good. So this was the time where the king was supposed to go out to battle. David was the king of Israel. But David tarried behind. He didn't go where he was supposed to go. It's the time of the kings to come out to battle. So if you're the king, you're supposed to go out to battle with the other kings. This was the time for that. For whatever reason, David decided to stay behind. When it was his time to go out to battle. But he didn't go. He did not go. Who wants to read over here? Read. Anybody want to read? You ready? Yeah. Two to three for us. You can do it. Thank you. <laughs> Two through three. Let's see what happens. You want me to read what? Two through three. We're in uh, Second okay. King. We're, excuse me, we're in uh, Second Samuel. Read two and three. Okay. Um, and it came to pass Shh. in the evening that Daniel arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And 
And Daniel said and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Belsheba, the daughter of Elisha, Eliama, and the wife of Uriah? Uriah the Hittite. And the Hittite. Perfect, thank you. So David was supposed to go out to battle, but he decided to stay home. Thank you. And guess what? When he, when he was up on his roof, when he was supposed to be on the battle, he saw somebody else's wife and he started to like her. But that wouldn't happen if he wasn't there. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. He wasn't supposed to be at his house. He was supposed to be out in battle. But he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And as you read this story uh, on your own time, he ended up uh, dealing with somebody else's wife, killing her husband. He had a whole bunch of drama in his family. They started infighting. His own sons started to kill him. He had to actually have his servants kill his son, even though he didn't want that to happen. But it was all this drama because David was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was supposed to be out there with the rest of the kings in battle because that was the time for it. How many people know if, you have, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you can have some problems? Right? You can have some problems if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Your mom and dad say, hey, I want you to be home at 9 o'clock. You need to be home at 9 o'clock. You know what? I can still hang out a little longer. It's going to be 10 o'clock, 10.30. I don't really got to be home. You're hanging out, even though mom and dad said be home at 9. You're hanging out in the corner. But here comes Tony. And you got beef with Tony. Oh, shucks. Here comes Tony. What's up, partner? Thought we had beef the other day. Oh, we about to go at it. I don't want to get in with Tony. But you wouldn't have had to get in with Tony if he was at home. But you decided to stay outside. So now you and Tony scrapping. And the police come. Say, hey, how y'all doing? Let me take y'all inside. Slap some cuffs on you. Now you got to call your mama, call your daddy, and you got a whole bunch of drama. Why? Because you wasn't, went at home like your parents told you to be. Because you thought you was balling. You thought you was the big style. You're going to hang out a little longer. You was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Now you got beef with Tony. And now y'all, and now y'all caught up in the cuffs. Wrong place, wrong time. How many people have had their parents tell them, I don't want you going over so-and-so's house? Right? Some people, your parents, I can see your friends, see your associates. I don't want you to go over so-and-so's house. Right? Because they see something that you may or may not know. This is the wrong person for you to be around. This is a bad influence for you. I don't want you going over their house. But you decide, you know, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to sneak over there with mom and dad not paying attention. I'm going to go over my friend's house because they're my friend. You hanging out, do whatever you're doing. And they say, hey, yo, we're about to get into some stuff. Come on down to the basement. Oh, wait a minute. We about to come over. Let's come. I want you to come down to the basement with me. We got. Well, I got some other friends coming over. We're about to get into some stuff in the basement. In the basement, right? In the basement. What you talking about in the basement? Oh, sucks. How do I? What's up with this? I don't want to be a part of this. I, I, I didn't want this. It's not what I want to be a part of. But they got some other people coming over. Oh, this is getting hot. I don't want to be in this situation. Why are you in that situation? Because your mom and dad told you not to get over there. They already told you. They gave you the warning. That's the wrong place to be in. But you chose not to do it. You chose not to listen to your mom and dad. So you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And now you got to figure out how I'm going to get out of this. What am I going to tell my friend? I, I don't want to be a part of this. What's going on? That's not me. Oh, oh. You weren't supposed to be there. You weren't supposed to be in that situation. You weren't supposed to be having to be dealing with that. But you chose to disobey your parents. And now you're in the wrong place at the wrong time having to deal with that situation. How many people have been in the wrong place at the wrong time already? Who wants to tell us about the experience they had being in the wrong time in the wrong place? Anybody have something they want to share about being in the wrong place at the wrong time? <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. Would you? <laughs> Listen up, y'all. Go ahead, sister. I got, I got to think right quick. Yeah, take your time. <laughs> okay, quiet down. We'll give her a chance to think about it. I ain't gonna lie, that's too fair. I can't do that. I can't do that. That's too fair, bro. No, no. Said it's 
It's too fat. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, drop them coming your way. There you go, drop them. I remember I was in middle school. Shh, shh, shh. And, All right, I'll uh, listen up. I remember I was in middle school and I um, told my friends in the classroom uh, right before class, and I said, you know what? I had noticed that they, they didn't want no fights going on this year. I was like, this is this is good. This is a good lengthy time without having any drama. I walk out the classroom. Next thing I know, there's a horseshoe of people around me. And next thing I know, this dude was just, mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm like, oh no. And it was, it was, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time because I was standing like right in front of the fight. And I was like, oh, I was, I was trying to back up, but then there was a wall of people behind me. So I'm like, oh, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> You know, you know how it goes, right? The kids circle around. You can't get out. You're in the middle of the circle. I don't want to be here, but I'm backing up. They're pushing you forward. Wrong place, wrong time. Anybody else been in the wrong place at the wrong time already? They want to share out with anybody. Okay, we got another one. Yeah. So this happened last year. Uh, there was the two girls. I was eating lunch with one of my friends. And the table, like, across from me, Two girls were going at it, and I'm sitting here like, Lord, please don't let a fight bust out. And next thing you know, the girl smacks the other girl, and then everybody start rushing over. And I'm sitting here like, <sighs> and then the next thing, a dude runs in the cafeteria talking about, so who hit my little sister? And then oh. everyone just goes crazy. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not here for it. And I'm not here to find out what he about to do. <laughs> Right, because now he's looking for anybody, right? He's not thinking rational. He's like, you look like the person who, slipped his, who slapped his little sister. That wasn't me. Coming your way. That wasn't me. Someone else with the wrong place, the wrong time experience. Uh, the only thing I can think of is when I was uh, back at my old school. Okay, y'all, listen up. Sister speaking. And I just so happened to be in the vicinity of, like, someone... Uh, Someone getting yes. made fun of, I don't remember what. And then after uh, I went outside, these two girls came up to me and said, were you making fun of this person? And I had no idea what they were talking about I, because I was just sitting there when it happened. Right. I, I think they thought that I was the person that said something. I didn't do anything. Right. And I got pushed to the ground for no reason. I was innocent. Oh, no. I plead the fifth. I didn't do anything. So it wasn't me, right? But I happened to be around. That's the, that's the challenge. When you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, it's the challenge. I got you next, brother. It's, that's the problem. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and some drama come upon you, right? Go so, ahead, sister. So my mom always told me, like, don't sit at the back of your school bus. And okay. one day, I decided to do it anyway. A fight broke out. They were fighting on top of me. <sighs> and mama already told us ahead of time, because mama knew. Don't sit it. If y'all don't know, oh yeah. If y'all don't know, the drama happens in the back of the bus, right? How many people know the drama happens in the back of the bus, right? That's why I just wanted to go. I'm gonna go to the back of the bus. Me and my crew. But guess what? The drama happens in the back of the bus. The bus driver can't really see what's going on in the back there. He's too busy. He's trying to drive, right? So he's really not paying attention back there but it's buck wild in the back of the bus. So if you want some drama, go to the back of the bus. If you don't, don't go to the back of the bus. I got y'all next. Go ahead, brother. Shh, let's listen up to each other. All right, so this was at work. I'm just minding my own business and just putting the pallets up. And then this dude, he started looking at me crazy. And I'm just like, what, what's going on? Right. So I'm minding my own business, putting the box up. And then he walked to me. He was like, hey, yo, look up. Stop looking at my girl. I'm like. I was not looking at the girl. What you talking about? He said, you think I'm... Oh, That's damn. me. Go ahead. He said, so you think I'm stupid. I'm like, dude, I'm not looking at your girl. I don't even want your girl like that. She's not that important. What are you talking about? And so he just walked up to my face. He's like, all right, bro. This is the only time for to tell you this. Don't be looking at my girl. I'm like... All right, whatever. And they all just look at me like, dude, why would you look? And I'm like, I would just mind my own business. <laughs> I had my eyes up. I wasn't looking at her. I didn't have my glasses on either, so he thought I was looking at her. So <laughs> I'm squinting. I got my glasses. Right. Hey, Amen. Right. Wrong place. Wrong time. It wasn't me. I wasn't doing anything. So I was walking to band class, and these two girls had, they were just standing in the hallway waiting for people to move. So after like 10 minutes just standing there, they started fighting, 
And the band teacher, he was just sitting there watching them fight. He wasn't doing nothing about it. And I was trying to get to class. And it was just a hundred people who had their phones out taking videos of them fighting. And then the next day, the whole school, we, was, we got in trouble because they posted the fight on Instagram and the principals and stuff saw it. Ooh. So then we all got in trouble. That social media changed everything. I was just walking through, now you snapped on social media, mom and dad see it, everybody see it. Wait, that wasn't me. Wrong place, wrong time. So look. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. I'm going to my next class, right? I'm walking with my friend. So these are these two girls who into Guys, it. What's up? Oh, these two girls who was quiet. into it for the wrong reasons, they was talking to each other. And so one of the girls came up to her. She was like, woo, 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 did you say this? Woo, woo, woo. And then she was talking about something. No, little girl, what did you talk about? Boom, boom, boom. And so then the girl was walking away. And so the girl turned around. She was like, who was you talking to? Say that again. Say that again. So now, mind you, she bigger than her. So she over there walking to her, yelling at her. Woo, woo. And then now they like, the security guard's trying to stop it. No, right. the big girl out here pushing the security guard, slapping, pushing, all that. So one of my other friends who big too, she jumped in and she trying to grab her too to stop fighting. But whole time, this girl took an advantage of both of them and she both pushing them oh and all God. that stuff, slapping, all that. She like, let me go, let me go. Do, 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 do. And then the other girl who's on the other side of the hallway, she was like, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Come on, come on, come on. Girl, nobody holding you back. <laughs> Why is you? <laughs> Why you even doing this? Right. We got a lot of examples of wrong, you know one? Wrong place at the wrong time. It's the last one, then we move on. So apparently this is a hot topic, brothers and sisters, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. All right, y'all, everybody have hey. a chance to talk. I want from volunteer so, readers, I want some hands up. One of my friends decided to walk me to my class. So we both walk in and um, we walk straight into a fight circle. Luckily we got out of it, but it's a whole brawl. Like it was like four or five girls fighting each other and it's all over social media, but they was all fighting each other. So now I'm trying to hurry up and get to class. And yeah, but I seen the video though, but. Okay. <laughs> wrong place, wrong time. So brothers and sisters, we learned again, this is David who was a righteous king. Right? We're talking about us being righteous, right? We're keeping the Lord's commandments. We're keeping the Lord's Sabbath day. But ending up in the wrong place at the wrong time. So this is not, I'm not talking about wicked people. Because we know wicked people are not keeping God's commandments, don't care about God. Right? We know they're going to get some comeuppance, right? Get some paybacks. But we're talking about righteous people making a mistake to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Not listening to mom and dad. Don't go over the house. Don't sit in the back of the bus. Don't hang out with so-and-so. And for whatever reason, we say, you know what? I'm going to decide on my own not to listen to this good advice, and I can end up in drama. So we can continue to learn and suffer the consequences ourselves, or we can learn from the kings, from their mistakes, and understand not to do that so we don't have to end up in the drama. I'm not going to do that because mom and dad said not to do that. Why? Because I don't want the drama. How many people like dealing with drama? How many people like dealing with drama? You like dealing with drama. Why you like dealing with drama? It's fun to deal with drama. Why, why is it fun to deal with drama? It's just like, um, I want to hear this. Let's hear I don't it. know, it's just fun. It's for, where you from? What part of town? Um, 63rd. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm from New York City. When you want some drama, it, I'm from New York City, born and raised. So. Born and raised, my brother. So when we say you want some drama, we, we get you some drama. Have you been in the hospital yet from your drama? Cree, you been in the hospital yet for your drama? Have you been in the hospital yet from your drama? So you ain't had no drama yet? Yeah, your lip busted? Both sides of your lip? Only one side? You ain't had enough drama. Eyes swollen up? Me? I don't like drama, so I avoid drama. I don't like drama, so I avoid drama. Because drama is not fun. I don't like my lips being busted. I don't like having to go to the hospital dealing with drama. So I choose not to have that. Okay? But I'm saying, as people who like drama, drama is out there. We can tell you where to go to get the drama, what blocks to go to to get the drama. Because there's drama out there. But hopefully, you don't like to have drama. 
hopefully you like to be able to go in peace. Hopefully you like to be able to have, hang out with your friends and have a good time, play sports, video games in peace, not having drama, not having people start fights with you because you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay? But again, if people like to have drama, there is drama available. But if you don't want drama, let's follow these, not make these same mistakes and don't be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Let's go over to the next one. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 25. 2 Chronicles chapter 25. 2 Chronicles chapter 25. 2 Chronicles chapter 25. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Again, we are studying righteous kings and mistakes that they have made and seeing what we can learn from them. Second Chronicles chapter 25, and we're going to start with verses 1 and 2. Read about Amaziah. Second Chronicles chapter 25, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Can I get a volunteer for that? Any volunteer for that? Second Chronicles 25? Awesome. Appreciate that, bro. So, yep, Second Chronicles 25. We're gonna read verses one and two. All right. Wait, we, we're not, we're not Second starting. Chronicles 25, and we're gonna read verses one and two. Everybody got that? This is on page 589. If you have a church Bible, 589 in the church Bible. Okay, my brother. All right. Amaziah was 20 and five years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoiadan of Jerusalem. Good. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Oh, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. We're going to see what that means. So he did what, again, we did with righteous kings. So he did some good stuff. We're going to find out. So he was a righteous king, but he did not do it with a, uh, with a, a whole heart or with his full heart. Who wants to read verses 3 and 4? Huh? Yeah, read through the curve. Hit 3 and 4 for me. All right. You want me to start right now? Yep, 3 and 4. All right. Now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him that he slew his servants that had killed the king, of, the, the king his father. But he, he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law of the, in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. Right. So some servants killed his father. And when he became king, I got you a minute, when he became king, he decided, you know what? I'm going to kill the people that killed my father, but I'm not going to kill their children, because that was the law. Every man is guilty for their own sin, is going to suffer for their own sin. He could wipe out their whole, all their family. But again, he was a righteous king, but not with a full heart. But this he did righteously. The people who killed my father, I'm going to kill them and hold them accountable. But I'm not going to kill their sons. That was a righteous thing he did. Yes, my brother. Go ahead, Joshua. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So that was a righteous thing that he did. Right? Again, we read about righteous kings. Let's jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. You good? Yeah, All right. Let's pick it up. Let's read verse 7. All right. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit, with all the children of Ephraim. Okay, so he's going to go out to battle. He said, don't let these other people go with you. God's going to provide all the help that you need. Don't let these other nations go with you to battle. Jump down to verse 11. All right. And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote the children of Sarah 10,000. So he listened to God and he, and he won the battle. Again, he was a righteous king, not with a, not with a perfect heart though. But again, he listened to God. What should I do? God sent the prophet unto him and he listened to him and he won the battle. That sounds pretty good so far. So far what we read in Amaziah he ain't made no mistakes. He's, he's right on there, right? He killed the people that killed his father. He didn't kill their children. That was a righteous decision. 
He's trying to find out what to do in the battle. The prophet told him what to do to win. He did that. He won the battle. So now we've got to see, okay, what mistake did this brother do? Because he, he wasn't following the Lord with a, foot, with a perfect heart. Let's jump down and read 14 and 15. This is after all the good stuff that this righteous king did. Let's pick it up at read 14 and 15. Let's see what mistake he happened to do. Wait, you want me to read? Yeah, you got 14 and 15. You want to roll. Right. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites that he, that he brought the gods of the children of Ser and set them up to be his gods. Damn. <laughs> and, and, and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. You did what? And God didn't help you win the battle. Now you're bringing other gods? Wait a minute. Go ahead, 15. But for the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto them a prophet, which, which said unto them, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver thereof? their own people out of thy hand. So this is even the people, thank you, brother, even the people he defeated in battle, he got their gods and started bringing them back. What are you doing? You did all this righteousness, but now you're going to serve other gods. It don't make no sense. Now God is mad at you. Again, he was, this was a mistake. He was right, but he didn't have a perfect heart before the Lord. He wasn't fully turned over to the Lord. Let's see the example. Let's say, I'm keeping all the Ten Commandments. Someone's keeping the Ten Commandments. Are oh, you doing good? I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. But then you turn around and say, I'm going to start fornicating. Having sex before marriage. What are you doing? Now you're offending God. You're in trouble. You don't have that perfect heart. It don't make no sense. This is what we find in our Amaziah. He was doing some stuff good, but then he was already doing some other stuff that was not in alignment with what God wanted. This is the mistake. Can we learn from this? I got to do the whole thing, brothers and sisters. Not part, not just a partial, but the everything that the Lord commands. Okay? How many people know we got some feast days coming up? Some feast of the Lord coming up. What feast days we have coming up? Ooh. Oh, thank you. I was on my mic. So where's my mic? There we go. Thank you, brother. What feast of the Lord do we have coming up? Have trumpets. Right, got Memorial of Trumpets coming up. Atonement. We got a Day of Atonement coming up. Shut up. Eighth day. Eighth day feast coming up. And um. Oh yeah, and Tabernacle. Feast of Tabernacles coming up. So that's we got. Eat, right? Yep, we got to eat. That's right. Exactly. That's right. We gonna eat at that feast. So we got some feasts for the Lord coming up, brothers and sisters. We know that, right? These are feasts that God commands us to keep, right? Well, let's say you're keeping all the feasts of the Lord. That's a great thing. You're in a line with righteousness. You're doing what you're supposed to do. But then you turn around and say, guess what? I'm also going to be celebrating Christmas on December 25th. Whoa, what you doing, brother? That's not in alignment with the book. That's not one of the feasts of the Lord. God told us not to have that Christmas tree up, right? He said, I'm going to start celebrating Easter. So you're keeping the feasts of the Lord and you keep in Christmas and Easter, that don't add up, brothers and sisters. That's not a perfect heart, right? You got to keep all of the things that God commands and not do the things that he doesn't want us to do. We can't do those. So if you say you're a servant of God, your, your math has to math up. You tell me you're serving to God and you're keeping God's commandments, you can't be out here fornicating. You say you're a servant of God, you keep the feast days, you, you can't go to your, someone go to your house on December 25th, you've got a Christmas tree up. It don't add up. You can't say, oh, Easter, quote, unquote, Easter time, I'm celebrating the Passover, but I'm also celebrating Easter. It don't add up. God wants you to serve him with a perfect heart. I need all the things that the Lord commands do. That's what we should do. And all the things he says we should not do, we should not do. So this is a lesson, brothers and sisters. We want to make sure we're doing everything that the Lord commands us to do. Not partial, but all of it. Because we see Amaziah was doing good for a while. Then he decided to take on these other gods. And guess what? He offended God. Now God's mad at him. And we know what? So now he's going to have some drama coming on him. So this is a lesson, brother, sister, we got to learn. You know what? I got to make sure I got a perfect card. We got to ask God, God, give me a perfect card. If something that I'm doing that's offensive to you, please help me to overcome it. 
Please take it away from me. Pray about it. If you have any questions, let me read the Bible, find out what does God want me to do about this particular topic. Talk to your parents. What should I do about this? Talk to some of the elders in church. What should I do about this? What does God feel about that? And get some learning about it. Okay? But God wants us to have a perfect heart before him and keep all the things that he said do. Okay? Let's go to the next one. We're going to, you know how we do, we pass a little candy around. I think we need a little candy. I'm going to pass it around. You take one. Pass it. No, no, okay. You okay? These are for some, these are some game ones. We'll take these out of there. But there's still plenty of them in there. Take one and pass one down. Uh. Take those and pass those around. We'd like some candy. While we're doing that, we're going to 2 Chronicles chapter 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Good. Second, you got it? Okay. We're going 2 Chronicles chapter 14. I'm going to pick it up at verse 2. 2 Chronicles chapter 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Can I get another reader? Can I get another reader? <coughs> Any volunteers for reader? My talkers. Can I get a reader? Ho, ho, ho. 2 Chronicles, we're coming your way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You up, baby? 2 Chronicles. Chapter 14. <laughs> 2 Chronicles, chapter 14. Pick it up at verse 2. 2 Chronicles, chapter 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. We're going to find out about Asa, another righteous king. 2 Chronicles, chapter 14. And we'll pick it up at verse 2. Everybody got it? Raise your hand when you got it. By God, we get All right. Go ahead at two through four. Two or four? Yep. All right. Shit. And as I did, and as I did, which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God, mm -hmm. and commanded Judah to seek God of their fathers to do the law, the commandments. Okay, keep going two through four. Go ahead. Also, he took away out of all this, the sites of Judah, the high places, and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. Thank you. Okay. That's not. Where you at? Go ahead, brother. That's, that's it. Wait, here, pick it up again. Pick it up at three again. Pick it up at three. For he took away the altars of the strength of God. And the high place and break down the image and cut down the growth. This is good stuff he's doing. Right? He's keeping his eyes on the Lord. He's getting rid of all this paganism out of his country. Go ahead at four. And commanded Judah to seek the, the Lord God was their father and to, and to do the law and commandments. And do the Lord's commandments. So this was a righteous king. This is some good stuff. He sought the law. This King Asa. He was a righteous king. Thank you. He did good. Got paganism out of his country, was seeking the Lord, teaching people to keep the God's commandments. So he's doing some righteous stuff here. Let's jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. We'll read 9 through 12. Can I get another volunteer? 9 through 12. We got you next. We'll read 9 through 12. Yeah, same, same chapter, 9 through 12. Shh, shh, shh. 
Okay. Everybody got it? Let's go, okay, go ahead. And and there came and there came out against them z zero zero an Ethiopian with an host of a thousand thousand and three hundred carats. Yep. And came up to Meresha. Mm, Meresha. Then then Asa. Asa went out against them and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephatha Zephatha and Marisha. Marisha. And Asia cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help when the with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude, O Lord. Thou art of God, let not man prevail against thee. So this was a righteous guy. He's calling on the name of the Lord to help in battle. Right? Again, this is a righteous, we're talking about righteous kings, not wicked kings. He's seeking the Lord, he has problems, he's seeking to the Lord. That's a great thing. Go ahead and wrap it with 12. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asia and before Judah and the Ethiopians fled. Thank you. So the Lord helped them in battle. He won in battle. That's a beautiful thing. Again, he's a righteous king. The Lord's listening to that prayer, right? Again, we are studying righteous kings, but we want to see if they made any mistakes that we need to learn from. Let's go to our next one. So, so far we established he's righteous. God delivered him from a battle, beat up the uh, Ethiopians. Let's go now to, to chapter 16. Chapter 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Let's see what happened in the future with Asa, King Asa, this righteous king. See, can we learn something? 16, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. 16, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. All right, go ahead, my brother. All right. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come into Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. Okay, so another, so the king of Israel came out with him, and he sought somebody else. Now, do we hear in that particular situation did Asa saw God in that situation? What did he do? What did he do? Who did he, did he seek somebody else? What did he do? Did he see God in that situation, Seth? No. He didn't see God in that situation. But this is a righteous king. Before he was in a battle, he sought the Lord, and the Lord delivered him. But he's fighting the Ethiopians. Now he's in another situation with a battle. But here he decides to go to another king and seek his help. Wait a minute. So I'm righteous. I saw God's help in one battle, and the Lord delivered me from that. I'm in another battle. What should I do? What should I do? <laughs> what should I do? Seek God's help. I should seek God's help. I already learned, right? I already say, hey, I'm righteous. I see God. He's going to bless me. He's going to help me. I'm in this, another situation. Why would I go to another resource? Why would I go somewhere else other than to God? Let's see what God had to say about it. Let's jump down to verse 9, 7, 7 through 9. We're going to read 7 through 9. Carson, you good for this one? Cool. 7 through 9. Let's see what happened here. Again, righteous Asa. The Lord delivered him the first time. The second time, he didn't see the Lord. Let's see what happened. Seven through nine. And at that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine land. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host? 
with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine land. Mm. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. You done foolishly here, Asa. You did foolishly. You didn't seek after me. And I delivered you last time. This time you went to another king. What he said, you've done foolishly. This is a righteous king. This is King Asa, but this is a mistake he made. He didn't seek after the Lord here. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. So since you chose to like drama, I'm going to bring some drama on you. So now the rest of your life, you're going to have the drama. Because that's what you like. So here come the drama. But this was a mistake he made, brothers and sisters. It's like you playing sports. You got a great coach. Y'all win it. But then you see you beat up in all the teams in your division. Another team in the, in the division gets a new coach. You're going to decide to stop listening to your coach when you win it. And I'm going to listen to this other coach see what, what advice he has on how I should play the game. How much sense does that make when you're beating them up? You winning. Why would you go ahead and listen to another coach? Don't make no sense. Unless you like losing. Well, other than that, it don't make no sense. Right? You got some opportunities. You got some challenges. I'm going to go talk to my parents. Right? They keep God's commandments. They take me to church. They teach me the law of God. I got a, some problem coming up. I'm going to go talk to somebody else's parents who don't believe in commandments, don't believe in the Sabbath day, don't go to church and see what their advice I should do in life. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I should not listen to my parents who love me, teaching me God's commandments, taking me to church, providing for me, but I'm going to go listen to somebody else's parents and think what, they, what I should do. When their parents don't keep God's commandments, don't take the kids into church. I want to listen to them. That don't make no sense. Right? But that's what Brother Asa did. Again, he was a righteous king, brother, sister. We're not talking about the wicked. We're talking about mistakes that the righteous kings made. We all here, we're trying to live righteously here, keeping God's Sabbath day, keeping his commandments. These things we've got to learn that, okay? How many people have listened to the wrong person in life? How many people have listened to the wrong person? I got you next. I got you next. I asked for advice from a girl who I thought was, like, really smart, and we almost failed the entire project because she didn't know what she was doing. Oh, th that's, that's a great one, right? Uh, you know what? I think so-and-so is smart. Let me listen to what, the, what they doing on the test. They don't know nothing. But you listen to them and you fail. Why are you listening to them? No? <laughs> okay. Uh-uh. No, that's not suitable for the mic. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh okay. No problem. <laughs> I, I understand. I said, so what? You can listen to the wrong person. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. What's another example? Go ahead, brother. My older cousin trying to give me advice on how to, like, talk to certain people, you know, talk to girls. But I tried doing what he said, and she looked at me like, you was a goofy. Why are you saying that to me? So, <laughs> so, I, looked, so I looked at him like, dude, don't ever ask. Don't ever offer me advice again, because I don't know how you even got a girlfriend with that advice you gave me. So, Don't make no sense. No, it'd be your own family, so. Hey, yes, okay, good. Listening to the wrong person. Listening to the wrong person. Go ahead, sister. Um, I asked which chips should I get, and he told me to steal them. What, what chips to get? Yeah. Okay. It was the wrong chips? No, it was between one and the other. Okay. And they told me don't get Oh, just take it. That's, that's some bad advice right there, right? Don't, don't pay for it, just take it. That's stealing, right? We can't do that. Uh, I took the wrong advice because this guy kept, who I was working with kept telling me what to write down on the paper in class. Listen up, y'all. And I kept telling him that was the wrong thing, but I listened to shut him up, and I had to do the entire thing all over again because I knew it was wrong, and he didn't do any of the work. <sighs> Listening to the wrong person. Say again. Huh? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. She said, yeah. She said that. I said that. If if it was a teamwork team, I would have got credit for all the work because I did it. So you ain't do nothing. And I was told the teacher gave me all the credit. Tell the teacher, get the teacher involved. Say, listen, I did all the work here. What's going on? How about somebody else? 
Think about listening to the wrong person. Any other examples? Right? Listen to an older cousin. Say, hey, we supposed to just hey play in the park. Now I got another idea. What are we gonna do? It's winter time. Let's go throw some snowballs at cars. Is that what we should do? Yeah, I know mom and dad stay right here. I know you're coming over to the house to visit. But now let's go throw some cars, snow some snowballs and some cars. I don't know if they do that anymore. That, we did that in my day. In winter time, you get up a little perch, some cars going by. It seems fun. Let's throw some snowballs at cars. Totally insane. Bad thing to do. But listening to the wrong person, yeah, let's do that. But this time, the car turned around. He said, oh, y'all like throwing it. Ran to the, the edge of the street, did a hard U-turn, and coming back at us. These are grown men. I'm only a child. It's time to run. I run. I don't know where I'm at. I'm visiting somebody else's house, my cousin's house. I'm running. He, he decides, you know what? He's older faster. I'm going to leave you. So you out here at my house, you don't know where you're at, and these guys are chasing us. Thank God we made it to the house, and these grown men decided to let these kids live and said, don't ever do that again. I've never thrown, never thrown another snowball at somebody else's car or they moving. But listening to the wrong person, trusting this older cousin, he's going to teach me the right thing to do. It can be a mistake, brothers and sisters. Make sure you're listening to the right person. Again, here, righteous Asa. God was blessing him. For whatever reason, he got to another battle. He decided not to listen to the Lord. The Lord said, guess what? For the rest of the time, I'm going to move my hand from you because now you're going to have wars because you've done foolishly. And the thing is, is what? When you're righteous, the Lord knows you know better. Right? It's not like you don't know. Because you, you've already read the law. You keep in the law. You know. So the Lord's going to hold you to a higher level. Why? Because you know better. You already know better. It's not like you didn't know. It was a mistake. You know you're not supposed to do it. You know you're supposed to rely on the Lord. But, and you chose not to do it. Oh, you will catch some drama. So the Lord pulled that hand back. So the rest of the days, you're going to have wars. Because you like drama. Here come the drama. And, and nobody can bring drama like the Lord bring drama. And he brought our brother Asa. Let's go, brother and sister. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 26. This is our, our last example before we go to break and before we wrap up. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Hmm? 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And we're going to read, uh, pick it up at verse 3. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. We're going to read about Brother Uzziah. 2 Chronicles chapter 26, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Read 3 and 4. Brother, volunteer to read. You got it. Everybody got it? 2 Chronicles chapter 26. We'll start off with verse 3 and 4. All right, my brother, go ahead, Carson. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. He did all the things right, Lord, according to Amaziah his father did. We read about Amaziah a little earlier today. Okay, this is the one that killed the people who killed his father, but then he decided to follow after other gods. But this is Brother Uzziah. So during his time, he was righteous, right? He said he did what was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father did. Let's jump down to verse 7. We're going to read 7 through 9. Verses 7 through 9. Okay, go ahead. And God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbal and the Mahunims. Yeah. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad even to the entering end of Egypt, for he, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Thank you. He is, he, this brother here was righteous, and the Lord helped him. So I'm back at seven, and God helped him against the Philistines. The Lord helps the righteous. He was a righteous king. The Lord helped him. And against the Arabians, he did all this good stuff. Okay? Let's go down to verse 16. Let's go down to verse 16. So the, the Lord is blessing him. 
He's a righteous king. The Lord is helping him in battles. He's winning. But let's see over here. We'll pick it up at verse 16. Let's see. What, let's see. This is a good learning for us. If, if we're righteous, we're doing what God commands, the Lord's blessing us, can we just do whatever we want to do? We're going to find out. 16 through 18. Gentlemen, we're at 16 through 18. 16 through 18. Okay, go ahead, brother. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. So wait a minute. So when he was strong, the Lord was blessing him. He was doing well. He lifted up to his own destruction and transgressed against the Lord. He got the big head. I could do anything. The Lord's blessing me. I go over here, I'm blessed. I'm over here, I'm blessed. I'm over here, I'm blessed. I'm a blessed man no matter what I do. <coughs> you bless as long as you keep God's commandments. Go ahead. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Thank you. So to burn incense, that's only the priest can do that. The king can't do that. He's not consecrated to do that. Only the uh, consecrated priest is allowed to do that. So that wasn't your job to do, Uzziah. But when you get lifted up, you think you can do anything. I'm a blessed man, so I can do anything I want. It don't work like that. You bless as long as you keep God's commandments. You stop doing God's commandments, you're not blessed anymore. But again, he started off as a righteous, a righteous king, did he not? Brother Uzziah? So, you're a righteous person. I'm doing th good things. I'm a blessed man. I'm a, I'm a male. Can I start praying to the God with my head covered? Or am I supposed to have my head uncovered as a man when I pray? Am I supposed to have my head covered or uncovered when I'm praying up on my man? Uncovered, right? So I'm a blessed man. I can do what I want. I'm going to leave this hat on, pray to the Lord. You know, I'm God's man. Psh, you wanna, I'm an offense if I do that. I can't just do whatever I want because I'm a blessed man. I'm only blessed as long as I keep God's commandments. I'm not free willy to do whatever I want. Again, making that offering or make the incense, that was for the priest to do. I'm a man. I'm supposed to have my head uncovered. I can't just go around with my head covered trying to pray to the Lord. I'm an offense at that point. The blessing stopped, it's not going to stop coming. What's going to come? The drama. Because now I've offended the Lord. We have the Day of Atonement coming up. Are we allowed to eat and drink on the Day of Atonement? We're supposed to fast on the Day of Atonement, right? How many people know that? On the Day of Atonement, which is coming up, one of the Lord's feast days, God commands us not to eat or drink for that day, right? It's the Day of Atonement. By my blessed man. I get a little thirsty on that day. Hey, me and the Lord like this. Get a little, little parched. I'm get a little Gatorade. Thirst quencher. Me and God like this. And am I, at that point, am I a fence to God? Is God mad at me because of that? Absolutely. I can't just go around doing what I want to do. I'm a servant of the Lord. I got to keep all God's commandments. I start drinking and eating on the Lord's uh, Day of Atonement. I'm a little hungry, a little thirsty. God's now mad at me. Now I got drama coming on me. You can't do that, brothers and sisters. You can't get conceited, even with your spirituality, say, you know what, I can do whatever I want now. I'm a blessed person. I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. You bless as long as you keep God's commandments. You stop breaking commandments, guess what? The Lord going to bring some drama on you because now you're in offense. This is Brother Uzziah. He was doing right stuff. He was a righteous king. And as long as he was doing righteously, guess what? The Lord blessed him, helped him in battle. Winning battles, but he decided, you know what? I got puffed up. I'm going to go ahead and do this incense. That's not for the king to do. That's only allowed for the priest. The priest only can do that. He went ahead and did that. Now the Lord's mad at him, and he's in offense with God. And the Lord's going to bring the drama. Like I said, ain't nobody can bring drama on you like God can bring drama on you. Okay? Make sense? So we have studied several righteous kings who made some critical mistakes that we read about. And we want to see what can we learn from these mistakes that these kings made so we don't make the same mistakes. 
Like I said, it's a lot easier to learn from the mistakes of others than to have to learn from your own mistakes. All right? Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for your time. We're going to close out. We can stand and face Jerusalem. We're going to go ahead and close out. We can go ahead and stand and face Jerusalem. We're going to go ahead and close out. All right, my brother. Our Father. Our Father. Which are in heaven. Which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. As you forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, brothers and sisters, we can go ahead and take a break now. We can go ahead and take a break. Time to go to the bathroom.